Thank you for tuning in again to another episode of the Salmon Trout Steel Editor Podcast. We appreciate your comments, subscriptions, and likes. Please text us out, send it out, message it out to your friends, tell them about the podcast. Love to hear from you. Love to see your comments. This article is called Finessing the Spinning Globe by Larry Ellis. And you'll have to remind me to stay spinning glow. I always just call them spin glows. Um, I don't know. They work, and they always have, and they're very popular. So, I'm going to read this. This episode is brought to you by AmatoBooks.com. Go take a look at the bargain book section. There's always new titles added to that daily, and of course, all the titles that you know and love. This article comes from a issue of Salmon Trout Steelheader magazine. You can support this podcast and Salmon Trout Steelheader by going to SalmonTroutSteelheader.com, where you can read this article and see the photos. And you can also subscribe to a year to three years of Salmon Trout Steelheader magazine. Get it sent to your door. Finessing the Spin and Glow by Larry Ellis. When the Warden Floating Lure Company, now owned by Yakima Bait Company, invented the spin and glow, little did they know that the lure would become one of the company's best-selling, let alone top-producing lures. I've always said that if a person had never heard of a spin and glow, they need to go out and get an education all over again. The winged bobber has steelhead magic written all over it, as defined by its name. It had gone through several name changes before the final moniker was chosen. The man who actually named this lure the Spin and Glow was a guy named Leo Ryan, said Howard Warden, in one of his many stories that he told me. Howard marketed and developed the Spin and Glow after his father invented it. We were all just trying to give the lure a different name, and Leo said, well, it spins and it glows. So after that, we decided to name the lure the Spin and Glow. It makes perfect sense, really, a perfect sense name for a perfectly spinning steelhead spinner that just happens to float. A spin and glow really is a buoyant spinner, says Buzz Ramsey, the former brand manager of the Yakima Bait Company. It allows guys, especially plunkers who are still fishing, to cast out and that spin and glow floats up right off the bottom where the fish are migrating upstream. That advice is mainly for plunkers, but because of its buoyancy, it also allows anglers to drift fish in areas where the normal weighted spinner would get hung up, which makes it the perfect spinner for all occasions. There have been plenty of knockoffs of the spin and glow, but they have never lasted very long on the market because Yakima Bait Company has a special patent that disallows the use of anything that comes even close to the looks of a spin and glow. We have a design patent on the spin and glow, notes Ramsey. Most patents are for a lifetime, but a design patent is forever, and we enforce it. There was a time when the company wasn't as aggressive about it, and that's how a few players got into the game, so we've been cracking down on them lately. What color and size should I use? Walking into a tackle store well stocked with spin and glows is like Christmas every day of the year. With at least 173 available finishes and 10 different sizes, you're like a kid in a candy store. And you can special order even more spin and glow collar combinations with different colored wings. Just think of the possibilities. Most of the SNGs, short for spin and glows, come with white vinyl wings, but some bodies offer black, chartreuse, pink, and glow in the dark wings as well. Obviously, you could go broke buying only one of each size, color, and wing combination. Thankfully, there are a few stalwart color and winged combinations that catch most of the steelhead in Pacific Northwest rivers and streams. I'll tell you what I see out there predominantly on the North Coast, says Ramsey. That flame chartreuse with a white wing, a mylar wing, and a chartreuse wing is what I see most of the time. If I'm fishing for winter steelhead from the bank, anglers' tackle boxes will be full of those three color combinations. That one color with those three different wings will be all they'll have in their tackle boxes. In fact, that chartreuse wing is a really big deal. Five favorite will catch colors. One, flame chartreuse with white wings. Two, sherbet with black wings. Three, egg fluorescent with white wings. Four, pink with white wings. Five, pearl pink with white wings. These are the author's favorite must-have spin and glows that he takes on every trip to any Oregon coastal stream. Always carry these colors in your tackle box to minimize skunkage on all Oregon coastal streams. We are mainly talking about drift fishing, although that particular color scheme doesn't seem to matter whether you're plunking or drift fishing. A steelhead is a steelhead. 
On South Coast Steelhead streams, I make darn sure that my plunking box is full of flame chartreuse bodies with white wings. In fact, when I fish the Chetco, I'll make sure that my flip box is crammed to the hilt with the aforementioned color combinations. Mylar wings will work, but on too many occasions, I've seen anglers not hook up at all using mylar wings. We use a spin and glow with white wings and watch your rod tip meet the water time after time. But of course, mylar wings do have their special place. I have not used chartreuse wings as of yet, but you better believe that they'll be used this coming January and February. It seems like a lethal concoction for steelhead to me. Here's the general rule of thumb when it comes to using different colored wings. When the sun is out, that's when the mylar wings seem to fish a little better, notes Ramsey. When the water's got some color to it, it seems the white wings are best. And in clear water, I like the black wings. And now we have a wing that glows. It works really well when the water's turbid and it's charged up. On too many occasions, I've caught steelhead when flashing a bright light on a spinner with a glow-in-the-dark tape on the blade, especially at the crack of dawn. Now Yakima Bait has those bases covered with their new glow-in-the-dark wings. But as everyone knows, there are always exceptions to every rule, and anglers seem to have their own preference when it comes to hot body colors and wing combinations. But by far, my most favored spin and glow has been the flame chartreuse body with white wings, which on the south coast has been deemed the Czech Coast Special. And every river has its own color, with the aforementioned color combination being a favorite on numerous Oregon coast rivers. When I made a call up to Arlene's Cafe in Elkton on the Umpqua River, guide Daryl Moore said that most of the plunkers were hooking their steelhead on the Umpqua Special, which is, of course, you guessed it, a flame chartreuse body with white wings. In the Yakima Bait catalog, flame chartreuse with white wings is also called stop and go, a phrase that was supposedly coined on the Chetco River. But there is also another hot color spin and glow that has garnered a lot of strikes on North Coast and South Coast streams as well. Regular pink is really good as is pink fluorescent, notes Ramsey. Pink pearl pink, glitter pink, and pink fluorescent, all with white wings, are all apples that fell from the same tree. They all work exceptionally well on a clearing river or in gin clear water situations. Now Yakima Bait offers some pink colored spinning glows with pink wings. They are lures just waiting for a steelhead to happen. Drift fishing spinning glows. Now here's a tip that will save you some money and allow you to stock your box with more spinning glows. You will be glad to have an ample supply of winged bobbers when the bite's hot and heavy and your tackle is breaking off. I've had a number of guys walk up to me at the sports shows and say, the smaller the spinning glow I use, the more fish I catch, notes Ramsey. Small meaning a size 12 or 14. This brings back a special steelhead memory. One day I was drift fishing a number 12 pearl pink spin and glow with white wings from the bank and I was using it with a standard pencil lead setup. At the lower end of Loeb State Park on the Chetco was a big boulder that had steelhead written all over it. Drift boat after drift boat made passes by that boulder back bouncing row and pulling plugs to no avail. So after everyone cleared out I made a cast just upriver from the boulder so that the winged bobber could drift by a potential steelhead holding area on the slacker side of the rock. As the small spin and glow drifted next to and around the boulder, it was suddenly stopped cold in its track. I thought that I might have been snagged, so I gave my rod a good solid jerk. Out of the water flew the biggest steelhead I have ever hooked in my life. It was too big to actually make those high shaking leaps we're so prone to seeing. The fish could only porpoise out of the water. I could see the hook was deeply buried inside the fish's mouth, proof that steelhead just gobbled down spinning glows. I envisioned having this fish mounted above the mantle, but getting to the bank would be another fishing fantasy. I fought the fish as it porpoised out of the water a half dozen or so times before it finally took off down the river into the white water. There was nothing I could do to stop it. My eight pound leader might as well have been a piece of thread. Eventually it spooled me and broke me off, but the movie of that large steelhead with the pearl pink spinning glow in its mouth still replays in my head 35 years later like an I Love Lucy rerun. Use long leaders. Make sure that your drift fishing leaders are at least 30 inches long. Because spin and glow spin, they can tangle up your leaders. So it's Ramsey. So you would think that a short leader would be pr less prone to tangling, but that is not true. Over the years, I've come to realize that if you're drift fishing, a longer leader tangles a lot less than a short leader. So a longer leader might mean anywhere from 30 to 36 inches long. Remember that it is important to use a bead between your hook and your spin and glow to act as a bearing. The smaller the spin and glow is, the smaller your bead will be. Generally speaking, a 5mm bead is the standard size bead to use with your winged bobbers. But on the larger size spin and glows, I'll sometimes use a 6mm bead. 
You really have to look at the hole in the back of the spinning glow and make sure that it isn't larger than the bead. If you are lucky enough to use the same spinning glow day in and day out, the hole in the back of the lure might enlarge. So this would be a case where using a larger bead would be appropriate. So carry four, five, and six millimeter beads to cover all sizes of the winged bobbers. Use the smaller size beads for the size 12 and 14 spinning glows. A size one aught hook should be plenty big enough to keep the hook point in the strike zone on a size four spinning glow when you're plunking. But downsize your hook to a size six gamakatsu octopus style hook if you're drift fishing a size 12 or 14 winged bobber. So if you're a drift fisherman, there is no excuse why you can't keep your tackle box well supplied with an ample supply of winged bobbers. Best colors and sizes for plunking. For steelhead, a size four is really the size for plunking. So if you had your druthers, you could conceivably get by plunking only a size four, but a size six also works well as the water drops and clears. In fact, I've taken out all my size two spin glows out of my steelhead plunking box to make room for more size four and size six. Just think about how many spin and glow colors and wing combinations you can fit into your flip box if you downsize to two sizes. The smaller size spin and glows also cost a lot less than the larger sizes. Row not necessary. I asked Buzz if he ever used spin and glows without row. All the time, he replied. I'm always amazed at how many people always have row on their rigs. There are times when steelhead have a real nose for bait. But there's a lot more times when they'd rather take the spin and glow without it. I also remember Howard Warden telling me that he never used row for either salmon or steelhead. On the Columbia in the spring of the year, just below Yakima, near the dam, we would go down and drift fish spin and glows from the bank and catch spring chinook, and I caught lots of them, Warden recalled. We would use the number six and four spin and glows before I started making the size two, and I didn't use any bait at all, he emphasized. In fact, I never used eggs at all to fish for either steelhead or salmon. Here's a reason why row can be a detriment when fishing for steelhead using spinning glows. The idea of having a floating spinner is that it will have plenty of buoyancy while either drift fishing or plunking. The moment when you stick any amount of row on a spinning glow, it will sink the wing bobber to a certain degree. So if the spinning glow is struggling to remain 12 inches above the bottom, the steelhead zone, putting only a small cluster of row in the egg loop will cause the spinning glow to sink lower towards the bottom. It might now be two inches above the bottom instead of the desired 12 inches. Now think about this. If you put a gob of row on the end of the spinning glow, it'll either be on the bottom or an inch away from the bottom. You might as well wait for a mud shark to come by and grab it. Because of the way a steelhead is built, its eyes also naturally look upward. So you will want your wing bobber to remain in that 12 inch strike zone where they're always naturally looking. I have seen more fishermen get bit on the Chetco and Rogue Rivers by not using row at all. Remember that hooks have weight. Furthermore, a lot of people like to use treble hooks with their spinning glows as well. I'm not saying that the use of treble hooks are not effective, but again, you're still defeating the purpose of having a buoyant spinner. The weight factor of having two additional hook points is playing against you. So use a single octopus style hook on your spinning glows. Also make sure that you use the correct hook size for the spinning glow size. Use a octopus style one aught hook for size four spinning glows, a size one octopus hook for the smaller size six spinning glows, and a size six octopus hook for the very small 12 and 14 spinning glows. Beads are also weighty as well, so use the smallest bead that is necessary to keep your spinning glow rotating. If you want to use smaller hooks and move the hook point further back from the spinning glow, then use two beads. Where to cast. This is very important stuff. If you were drift fishing, rig up using a piece of lead or a slinky for your sinker, the same as you would do if you were drift fishing a little corky or a gob of row and yarn. If you're drift fishing and the water is high, make sure to work all the tail outs, tips Nikamoto, editor of Salmon Trail Steelheader. Depending on the river you are fishing, there might be multiple tail outs in one section of the river. Don't leave any tail out unturned. Current seams are the next most important places to cast, especially if the river parallels the current seam. They're easy to spot. A current seam will have a rough ripply water on the river side of the river's surface, connecting to slack calm water on the bank side of the river's surface. The part where the two types of river adjoin is the current seam. Current seams can travel anywhere from 10 to 100 yards. The next best place to cast is along the upriver side and river sides of boulder water. Sometimes you will have to make long casts with heavier sinkers to bounce the bottom if you are fishing from the bank. Whatever size sinker you choose to use, make sure that you are feeling the bottom with your sinker every four or five seconds. 
If you were feeling the bottom every one or two seconds, your sinker is too heavy. Either cut off a piece of lead or use a smaller slinky. If you don't feel the bottom after about six seconds or so, your sinker is too light. So in this case, you will want to use a longer piece of lead or a larger slinky. Whether you're drift fishing, boulder water, a current seam, or a tail out, make a fake hook set after your initial cast to take the bow and slack out of your line. You want the current to pull your spin and glow alongside the boulder without any slack in the line. Much of the time, we'll fish will be hiding under the stealth and cover of the slack water just upriver from the boulder. If you are plunking, you're going to be fishing mainly along current seams at the heads of riffles and on inside turns. Make sure that you are using a rod holder that is sturdy enough to withstand the strength of the current and the ferocious strikes that will occur. Rig up thusly. Thread your 15 pound monofilament mainline through a plastic slider and then slide a 5 millimeter bead up the line. Tie your mainline to a number 6 crane swivel. Now make your leader. If you're using a size 4 spin and glow, tie a one octopus style hook at the end of a 30 inch or longer leader made of 12 pound monofilament using an egg loop knot. Now slide down a 5 millimeter bead onto the hook. Finally, slide down the spin and glow of your choice onto the bearing bead and tie the end of your leader to the number 6 crane swivel. Make sure to snap a pancake or pyramid sinker onto the snap at the bottom of the slider. The sinkers will range from 6 to 10 ounces. The author's favorite all-time spinning glow sizes and colors. If I had to pick five must-have spinning glow colors that will work on any Pacific Coast River, I would choose these size and color combinations. They are my confidence colors, which have proven themselves to me year after year. Best spinning glow sizes and hook sizes. All plunking spinning glows must be size 4 using a 1 octopus hook. All drift fishing spinning glows must be size 12 or 14 using a size 6 octopus hook. Written by Larry Ellis. Great article, great lure. Thank you so much for that, Larry Ellis. Again, this episode is brought to you by Amato Books, A-M-A-T-O books.com. Go there, take a look at the bargain section, take a look at the bestsellers and river journals and all the good stuff we've got there. Tell your friends about the Salmon Trout Steelhider podcast and we'll see you next time. See you next time.